And then the last excerpt I want to read. The last chapter deals with the election of President Obama and how white rage reared up in really deep, profound ways, almost in ways that we hadn't seen in years. And so as I walk through voter suppression, and then I move into the threats on his life and the disrespect that the office of the president received, I then begin to deal with the violence. Black respectability or appropriate behavior doesn't seem to matter. If anything, black achievement, black aspiration, and black success are construed as direct threats. Obama's presidency made that clear. Aspirations and their achievement provide no protection, not even to the God-fearing. On June 17, 2015, South Carolinian Dylan Roof, a white, unemployed, 21-year-old high school dropout, was on a mission to take his country back. Ever since George Zimmerman had walked out of the courthouse a free man after killing Trayvon Martin and a racially polarized nation debated the verdict, Roof had looked to understand the history of America. Trolling through the internet, he stumbled across the Council of Conservative Citizens, Tri-C, the progeny of the 1950s White Citizens Council that had terrorized black people closed schools and worked hand in hand with state governments to defy federal civil rights laws. But despite, but despite the group's avowed racist belief system, in the mid to late 1990s, as the Southern Poverty Law Center reports, the group boasted of having 34 members who were in the Mississippi legislature and had powerful Republican Party allies, including then Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott of Mississippi. By 2004, Mississippi Governor Haley Barber, the chair of the Republican National Committee, and 37 other powerful politicians had all attended Tri-C events in the 21st century. Earl Holt, the chair of the Tri-C, gave $65,000 to Republican campaign funds in recent years, including donations to the 2016 presidential campaigns of Rand Paul, Rick Santorum, and Ted Cruz. The Tri-C then enjoyed precisely the cachet of respectability that racism requires to achieve its own goals within American society. And its website of hatred and lies provided the self-serving education Dylan Roof so desperately craved. He drank in the poison of its message, got into his car, drove to Charleston, entered Emmanuel AME Church, and landed in a Bible study with a group of African Americans who were the very model of respectability. Roof prayed with them, read the Bible with them thought they were so nice, then he shot them dead, leaving just one woman alive so that she could tell the world what he had done and why. You're taking over our country, he said, and he knew this to be true. Well, not even a full month after Dylan Roof gunned down nine African Americans at Emanuel AME in Charleston, South Carolina, Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump fired up his silent majority audience of thousands in July 2015 with a macabre promise. Don't worry, we'll take our country back. No, it's time instead that we take our country forward into the future. Thank you. Thank you.